But this is the order screen. So she's going to look for a Stockton order that she wants to review with you. She's going to um, choose an ATS number. By the time it hits the online routing system, you all have placed your order. We know we have inventory. The order is, um, the, the inventory is reserved for your account and it hits an ATS. That ATS is dropped into the online routing system until it's cataloged and then it goes out to be picked and processed. So on the floor, in reality, we do have large screen monitors and the cataloger splits their screen. So the online routing system is on one side and the CARL cataloging utility is on the other side. So, um, this is her order. It shows her her titles and her ISBNs. So that I can catalog yeah. it. Yeah. So the screen basically gives us the information about the book that we have. Um, it gives us like the ISBN information, any publication information that we want to match to the record that we find. It, it even gives pagination. So when she goes to look for a full record, you know, the cataloger ensures that everything matches, mm -hmm. the, the, the bibliographic data matches the um, order data. Yeah, and so we actually catalog here in the CARL system. Most of our customers tell us, you know, that they want to, um, that Stockton Z is a Z30, uh, Z39.50 protocol that actually goes right out to Stockton, searches their database. Um, Stockton OCLC, um, if you're an OCLC member, you've probably signed an OCLC agreement with Baker and Taylor saying it's okay to use OCLC on my behalf. Um, you also have probably provided us an authorization and a password. So that Stockton OCLC is a profile that we have set up in the CARL cataloging utility that has that authorization and that password. So each time we search, we're searching on the library's behalf. And it also allows us on the back end to update your holdings. For Stockton, um, we start by searching the C3950 connection to see if um, there's a full record or to look for uh, the unordered record. I need this BK number. So, so BK, we know that that's a record that's from our title source. We know that that's not a record from OCLC or a record that Stockton's been using for a while. It, the record hasn't been cleaned up. It has an 037 tag. Mm -hmm. That 082 tag, tag is not only split, but it's tripled. We know that that's just a placeholder record. That was a non <coughs> record used just for ordering. So we want to replace that. Um, for Stockton, um, I want an OCLC record. And so I want to choose a record that's complete and has all the information. We can also see like if there's uh, multiple matches, we can see how many other libraries mm -hmm. own it. We try to uh, get a DLC record. Um, we try to stay away from uh, New Zealand or Australian records, UK records. Mm -hmm. um, we try to pick the best, you know, the best possible record available. So we've set up um, macros catalog and basically this um, makes it a little bit easier for us to get the record cleaned up based on the particular instructions for Stockton for the uh, library. Um, for example, it cleans up some of the text that Stockton doesn't want and so this makes it a little bit easier for us. So after I ran my, my macro, I now have a call number. This is a biography, an autobiography. So here's my call number tag. And it also put in um, some information that I need in order to print uh, the label set. And then I can actually go into my profile and finish uh, cataloging the copies. They go into the database for that particular customer. And in that database, there's 949 profiles for every different collection. And what that helps us do is the senior cataloger configures that profile to put in the static data that's not going to change, the constant data, for like, like the collection code or the item type or, or what have you. That's never going to change. And then there's a few fields that are probably going to change, like the call number, the price, um, things like that. So um, this also improves quality so that somebody's not manually typing in character for character every single field or subfield or code. So she, um, she's got her biography profile. Uh -huh. and, and based on, this, based on um, the information here, I know that I need a call number in subfield A and my spot.
find where you want to go to use the subfield one. That that's another thing. Um, mm -hmm. So subfield one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Numeric subfields are subfields that we use internally for either label purposes or to uh, for to to export the the file, the mark file to you all. So. When we export that marked file to you all, it picks up your item record, it picks up your 949 tags, but it won't pick up the numeric subfields. So you don't ever see those, but we need them to do what we need to do for labels and files. The system actually assigns a barcode at the time of order. At the time that this order hits the system, um, our, we have a barcode range configured into the customer setup and this system calculates the check digit and assigns a barcode to each copy ordered. Okay. We can't put AV on the ORS right now mm -hmm. because um, the information that we're getting isn't, uh, isn't quite what we need to catalog. So we still do AV with product in hand. We are working on getting better data in the online routing system so that we can move AV accounts to the mm -hmm. ORS. That would be yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 But we'd like to actually see the item. So no, we can see what the item is nice. It's yeah. just the duplicate barcode yeah. situation would yeah. go away if you had them on yeah. to generate it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Ninety nine percent of the time it goes away. If it's but it has happened in here too. Again, We've and, had, uh, yeah. Uh, and you know, and we, you can actually see when she puts the uh, the barcodes in, it'll pop up that string of barcode numbers for you to look at. Right. You know, and, and so we try hard, but if you accidentally not uh, uh, repeat copy and paste, and you still have the last barcode number, mm -hmm. you can put it in there a second time. And sure. I mean, it's something that we spend a lot of time in focusing making sure it doesn't happen. Right. Um, but Our situation was only with figures. So. Yeah. Yeah. And duplicate barcodes are something that literally will make us sick <laughs> because we understand yeah. what that means <laughs> and the cleanup and the rework to right, right. make everything that's right. That's why I was looking at this going, how does that happen? And it yeah. looks like this. I didn't think that's the way it worked, but you know, obviously yeah. videos are different. Right? Yeah. 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 Yep. Anything you do thousands and thousands of a week, eventually yes. it's the human beings are to reduce the number of... Well, it hasn't happened in maybe a year now, so... Yeah, Rob um, gave me like a little program mm -hmm. that he made up with Excel so I yeah. could check the barcodes to oh, make great. sure that we're not repeating. Because sometimes it was that um, we accidentally reprinted the yeah, exact same, same mm -hmm. list of barcodes that we had already used, mm -hmm. so we started over again. Yeah, exactly. And when we're um, scanning them in, we don't see anything that says, oh, you already used this right, one. Right, right. And so... We're not aware as we're scanning mm -hmm. whether we used it or not. But um, after um, we started using this uh, Excel program, mm -hmm. um, now we can check all the past barcodes that we've already Thanks. used. And so hopefully that, <laughs> that eliminates a lot of the duplicates. Mm -hmm. And there are no holdings, so I didn't miss a possible record. Yeah, that's something else we can see is if we're search, searching OCLC on your behalf and we have your authorization and your password, we can tell if you already own it or not. And if you do own it, then we're like, wait a minute, why didn't we find that full record when we did a Z search? But sometimes we're stopped and I've had that happen before and it's because I think it's suppressed. She just clicked on the product overview tab. So if um, we, we don't always go to the product overview tab, but if there's something like, oh, I'm not real sure, is this a biography or is this not a biography, or um, is it a genre or not a genre, the product overview tab gives you a little more additional information than what you get in the initial page. So it sometimes helps to make a decision, um, is this... Yeah, what, you know? where, where should I classify this? The first stop can be, they want up to seven decimals. We do have separate profiles um, for each collection. Makes it easier. Is there anybody here that would like to see an order that um, see what your order details look like when they come over on the online routing system. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. So you're from Santa Cruz Public. So you can see like this just shows the ISBNs and the titles and where where the title is in the process. But then if you go into the ISBN, you can see that this is what you send over: the branch code, the collection code. Um, even though that says item type, we ignore the headings because. Um, sometimes if you're sending over a poly segment ID 
or if you're sending over a Horizon Acquisitions number, we map it to one of those places mm -hmm. that isn't really an item type, but right. we know that. So you're sending us over, that, that's a polycyclic yeah. feed mm -hmm. or Polaris, and then um, the call number just says on order, and then, of course, the barcode. You're also sending us over a bibliographic control number. Um, we mm -hmm. probably use that in an O35 tag as mm -hmm. your match point. Right, right. The yeah. system is automatically doing that. It would be really backwards to have the product and then try to go match up with barcode and put it into our system and then do the cataloging. We want the system to do it. So for, for an ODC, um, you know, most ODCs you use collection, our collection development service and we send you lists broken down by collection. Mm -hmm. And so for these, um, the cataloger knows that this order is a picture book order and then when they click on a barcode, when they get a title up, um, they they don't get they don't get much anything in the grids because we know it's Imperial mm -hmm. Beach we know it's picture book you're not and, and most ODCs don't actually go through the ILS most ODCs mm -hmm. we have had a few that go through the ILS but most don't so uh, mm -hmm. you know we can tell another Polaris order mm -hmm. you're sending through your bibliographic control number and your poly segment ID mm -hmm. um, and then your branch your collection code. Um, call number. Grids trump what you find in the database? Um, what do you rely on? No, not necessarily. Okay. Like if, you know, and that is one question that we ask when we profile is, uh -huh. do you want us to always catalog as ordered or would you want us to catalog as established? Because okay. there's times when somebody might order something as juvenile mm -hmm. and then we go to their system and it's young adult. No. Um, so if they say, no, no, if it's already established, I want you to follow what's in my database. We do a lot of um, switching, like a Dewey Decimal Code might come in with a biography in the subject, but we want it in biography. So is that information we transmit to you and then you honor it when you're doing the cataloging? You, could, you could send that to us. Oh, okay. Um, and, and, and biography is a real... Uh, not, I don't subjective. want to say tough. Yeah, subjective is the yeah. right mm -hmm. thing. Exactly. Because exactly. most of the time, at the time of order, you're going to order it as adult nonfiction or juvenile nonfiction. Most of the time. Yes. Because at the time of order, you don't really know if it's a biography yet or not. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, if you do order it adult nonfiction, you've given us some criteria that says, you know, if the book focuses on... Um, one element of a person's life, I would rather have that in the Dewey number. Mm -hmm. But if it's about a whole life, then okay. I want it in biography. Where some customers say, if the record has all the indications of biography in the 008 tag, an alternate B, a Dewey number that ends in 092, subject to headings that have subheadings that say biography, lean on biography. We put okay. everything in biography. So, so different customers want different things. Okay. But you're saying if you passed us a note yeah. that said biography, and for Polaris, or I don't. Cersei. Oh, Cersei. I'm sorry, Cersei. Because I know when I'm when I'm inputting orders, there are fields that I fill in information like ages and, and stuff like that, and I, often I put in the note field there, you know, J92 if I wanted in biography, and I didn't know if those fields the notes well. field and title source doesn't come across to okay. us. Um, you actually have to be map it right. to a uh, mark field. So then when we do a Z search, we can see in your record that note. Okay. In it, like a 960 yeah, or 970. That's how we do our special labeling is we have the notes field mm -hmm. mapped to such a way that if we want to override, like, so for children's biography, for example, mm -hmm. we do that differently than our adult biographies. Yeah. And so for children, we use the notes field to say exactly what we want to do. And then your mark profile has it yeah. mapped to someone. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. yep. And every system puts it in a different place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and sometimes we can get it here. Like that call number field is a free form field. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you can put it in title source and we can get it, but yeah. not for... Not always. Well, yeah. if you order from title source, we can. Yeah. But, but if you order from your ILS... And Darcy, the other thing we do... And when you're cataloging, there's a different set of instructions for each customer. Mm -hmm. And we have those uh, instructions online with just a click to go to the County of uh -huh. LA's 40-50 okay. page document on how we catalog it. And so one of the first things they do if they're looking at that biography is, I want to go look at biography and the you've got the instructions how to do the uh, call number and, and what the code should be, but you've okay. also got the notes 
Um, well, see, and biographies may be established with an alphanumeric cutter. This is an old practice. Please cut her according to procedures. Now, they, all of your catalogers are account-specific trained. It's not right. coming down the line, but um, we have a process of uh, assigning people and one of the reasons when you're on a conference call and I keep asking about your budget and how much you're going to order, you know, we have to identify how many units a week we're able to do mm -hmm. per that particular person. Mm -hmm. If we need to make sure we have more than one person, you know, do need the person to have two people, et cetera. Yeah. And there's a whole process for managing people and resources so that we don't keep getting farther behind and gee, somebody should have told me. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, it really is complex. A lot of our time and effort, and it's real obvious if we don't do it right because you're not getting your books fast enough. Uh, and the other thing is, we don't want to start saying, Sorry, guys, we don't have any work for you this afternoon. We didn't take the time to find right. out. You know, if we can do it, we can cross train, they can have another account they can work on. Right. Uh, but it's, it, it's an important part of our work for to make sure we do a good job. I was just going to point out the indexed SAP. Um, I guess we instituted this probably maybe six or eight years ago. It's It's been quite a while, but um, you see how it works. And and what we've done is there there is a template for the index app. So everybody's um, library's SAP is set up in the same way. And actually the collections actually flow the same way. Uh, Mark was talking about cross-training catalogers from on one account to another or being cross-trained in at least a couple of accounts because if there's no orders that day, then we don't want to send them home. They can work on something else. Um, it's a lot easier to cross-train people. It's a lot easier for them to be able to go to the SAP and no matter what library they're working on, they find the information in the same place and in the same format. So it was that was something, a big project that we took on that um, really made a difference for us. Yeah, and the focus at that point is pay attention to which account you're working on. You don't have to, uh, you know, it, it used to be we would have a direct connection into Horizon and Cersei and III and you had to train each cataloger on each process for each ILS system because you were working live in that system. Mm -hmm. And you, as you all know, working live in an ILS is an education <laughs> in itself. <laughs> And so, you know, imagine trying to train 30 or 40 people, yeah. but if they had to move from one account to another and it was a different ILS, I mean, it was a huge skill set and a lot slower. The, the, what we've done is be able to take all of that data, put it into a single framework that our people can follow so that the, all the data is in the same place. It, um, it all flows into the cataloging record, and our instructions are focus on this set of instructions for County of L.A., Make sure you understand those instructions. You don't have to know how to catalog and search the in Horizon. And, well, and you go back to, um, to Carl and, and go to the databases. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show them that. Um, so, you know, so, you know, we can search this work file, which is the CLS customer live database. We can search Stockton Z, which is their ILS specifically. We can search Stockton's OCLC. Um, we've got a couple of, like, Alex is Baker and Taylor's corporate catalog. And there's, I mean, we, we have a huge staff in New Jersey of nothing but original catalogers that is all day long updating SIP records and um, creating original records. And our cataloging is very good. Uh, so, but some customers only want an OCLC record, and we, you know, we'll give them that. Um, so there's Alex. We also have a Library of Congress database. Most of the time, we don't search the Library of Congress database because Library of Congress records are downloaded into OC or uploaded or whatever. They're um, processed into OCLC on a regular basis as well as our own corporate database. We get files from OCLC all the time, I mean from Library of Congress all the time and, and add them to our database. So. You know, and, and used to when Mark was saying, like when we were live in a customer's ILS system, you know, we weren't able to be in all of those different databases using one platform. But here we're able to search, you know, all of those databases and, and the look and the feel of the record is exactly the same, no matter if it came from OCLC or from Polaris or from Cersei or from Triple I, it looks the same.
when we go out and search, we aren't searching and taking records from another customer's database and putting them in your database. You know, we, uh, if a county of LA has gone to uh, OCLC and put a record in their system, we're not taking that and sending it to Stockton. That's the group of uh, places that we'll go to when we set up the profile. We're setting it up library specific, you know, going to the bibliographic databases that are commercially available, but we're not out looking in other libraries' databases and bringing records in. Along with the CARL um, application, the CARL cataloging utility that we use to catalog your records, there's another utility that works with it called the ETORS. And it um, is for sending label data to the print server to be printed. It is for sending marked files out to the FTP site for you all to retrieve. And it is also for, um, that's where we send the OCLC, uh, or that's where we batch the OCLC files. We, we, can, we can point it to your, your library name, we put in your symbol, and then we put in a date range, and it creates an OCLC file, and then we have to manipulate it and send it to OCLC, the new data sync management service.